We are looking at figure 11.2 on page 214 of your textbook. So first of all, what you have to see is that in this situation, uh, in this graph, we have a situation where we have two different marginal damage curves. Now let's draw these curves quickly. On the vertical axis, I'm going to write cost. You can also give me a dollar sign if you like. Um, and then on the uh, horizontal axis, I'm going to write um, just level of emissions. Now, I know the textbook talks about ambient levels of benzene. Um, that's just a type of pollutant. I don't want to be too technical. So you're welcome to just write level of emission or even much simpler is just writing emissions for that matter. Uh, let's just make that capital E, emissions. So here I have zero emissions and it increases, zero cost and it increases. Now let's draw two types of marginal damage curves. The one is above the other. So the one is over here and the other is, is over here. Now you might ask why is there two different uh, marginal damage curves? In this case we're looking at the same pollutant. So it's not that the one pollutant is more uh, has a greater damage potential for the environment. This is the same pollutant. But remember in environmental economics we um, value everything in terms of humans. So if there's more humans exposed to the pollutant, then the damage would be higher. If there's less humans exposed to the pollutant, then the damage would be lower. So cities, for example, has densely populated areas. So if a pollutant is emitted into a, a dense populated city, then the uh, damage would be much higher as the marginal damage curve shown above. So I'm going to call it marginal damage and a little u for urban. On the other hand, in the um, rural, rural areas, there might not be a lot of people. So if a pollutant is uh, emitted there, it might not have as much of effect uh, damage wise. So it's lower than the urban uh, marginal damage curve. So that's why the two have different structures. The one is the, the, the marginal damage of the rural area is lower than the marginal damage of the urban area. And then I still have my marginal abatement cost curve over there. Okay, let's, let's assume it's the same for both. It, it costs the same amount of money to clean up the urban as well as the rural um, gluten. Now you can see we have two different equilibriums. The one I'm going to call ER for equilibrium in the rural area. The other I'm going to call EU, the equilibrium in the urban area. Now you'll see the equilibrium level of emissions in the rural area is higher than the equilibrium level of emissions um, in the urban area. So let's call this capital E2 uh, and capital E1. This might sound strange, but what this causes is that we can't have one policy um, in both urban and rural areas that's simultaneously efficient. Because let's say we say, okay, um, pollution may not be more than E1. So the policy sets pollution at E1. Then it's efficient for the urban area, but it's a bit stringent. It's a bit too strict for the rural area. On the other hand, let's say we put the uh, efficient level of emissions at E2. So the policy say efficient level of emissions is E2. Then it's, it's efficient for the rural area, but it's not enough. It's not strict enough for the urban area. So this this causes a problem and then we can say but listen let's make two let's rather create two policies one that's applicable on the urban area and one that's applicable on the rural area so if you live in a rural area you're allowed to emit E2 but if you live in, a, in an urban area you're only allowed to emit E1 now this is fine but it makes the policy very complicated and difficult to enforce so we see a trade-off emerging here in that 
if a policy is more complicated, then it could be simultaneously um, efficient for both urban and rural areas. But being complicated, it's difficult to enforce. Having a simpler policy, uh, it's not complicated, but then it can't be simultaneously efficient in both urban and rural areas. This graph is very important. You should be able to draw it. And very importantly, you should be able to explain it really well.